This is a very simple Minsky model to illustrate what happens when you have sectors that attempt to save money in an economy where there's a fixed amount of money and there's no change in the amount of money over time. So what I have here is the, the Gottlieb table that shows financial flows between different sectors. And the economy starts with $300 in existence, 100 in the bank accounts of the poor households, 100 in the bank accounts of the rich households, and 100 in the bank accounts of the firms. And that's my starting point. And then what I have is the rich and the poor and the firms each spend on each other, and I start with them each spending $100 per year on each other. So they have $100 in their account, their accounts are turning over twice a year. So in that sense, the velocity of money is two. And we're starting off where they're all spending $100 on each other sector. So aggregate uh, GDP is 600, which is six times 100. And individual income for each sector is 200. And at the same time, expenditure is 200. So aggregate individual savings for the each sector is zero, and the same applies to aggregate savings. I'm running the model very slowly. I'll speed it up slightly here. So now we start running the model, and you can see that bank accounts are all remaining at 100. GDP is 600, which is the sum of the six flows of $100 per year each. And savings is zero, both at the individual level and the aggregate level. Let's come down here and take a look there. Zero savings by each sector, and zero savings in the aggregate. Now, what I'm going to have happen is that I'm going to have the poor firms deciding to save money. So what they do is they decide to spend $5 per year less on both the rich and the firms, rich households and the firms. And you can do that either by moving this little dot up here using your mouse, or you can press the up or down or the left or right arrow keys to change the amount. And I've set it up in such a way that it changes by $5 per year for each press of the arrow key. So let's have them, first of all, reducing their spending on the uh, rich households by five, and then reducing their spending on the firm sector by five, while the rich ha households continue behaving the same way, and so do the firms. So I'll press the down, move the mouse over PR here, press the down arrow, and they're now saving, spending five less there, and now spending five less on the firms. So they are now saving, when you take a look down here, they're now saving $10 per year. But look what's happened to the rich firms, rich of households and the firms. They're dis-saving by precisely the same amount. And expenditure has fallen from a total of 600 to a total of 590. GDP has fallen by just as much as they're saving money. Now, of course, the rich households don't like losing money, so they decide to save as well. They spend five less on each of the other sectors. So you can see the impact of that is to stop the rate at which the poor households are saving money. Uh, of course, the firms are now losing even more money, so they decide to do the same thing. They cut back on their spending on poor households and their spending on rich households. Let's do that one properly. And now we have the new situation. And what's happened? Well, aggregate savings has remained at zero. I've still got minus five by the poor households. So what have I changed up there? Let's take a look. Ah, I over did how fast for, for firms are they're paying 90, 90 rather than 95. So let's just change that to 90. Okay, 95, pardon me. So now we have stable bank accounts once more. And what's been the impact of this attempt to save money? Well, it's shuffled money between the accounts. So the poor households now have $126. The rich have 94.8. The firms have 79.4. The total is still is still 300 because you haven't increased or decreased the amount of money in the economy. There've been periods where savings has occurred for each sector, but the savings by one sector have meant precisely identical dis savings for the other sector. But the really important point is the entire impact of this attempt to save, where each sector has started by trying to save $10 per year. They're all attempting to save $30 per year. What they've actually done is reduce GDP by $30 per year. And you can see that happening in steps over here. So what is savings at the individual level becomes an identical fall in GDP at the aggregate level. The whole attempt to save money and therefore grow your GDP over time actually causes GDP to fall because what you've done is you slowed the circulation of money. Now, this was the point which Keynes made, which he called the paradox of thrift. But this is, a, I think, a very powerful way of illustrating it. You can't save more money in the aggregate. The only way there can be an increase in savings in the aggregate by 
the, the say the real economy is if there's dissavings by some other sectors and those other sectors can be the international sector so you can be exporting more than you get back I mean, more than you buy in imports so you get a, a positive current account uh, so, uh, surplus or you can have banks lending more than they get back in repayments which of course means the amount of money in your bank account increases but so does the debt you owe to the banks by precisely as much or governments can spend more than they get back in taxation which of course is what politicians are always trying to avoid but if that doesn't happen there's no increase in the net amount of money that is in existence for the private sector.